Okay, now let us talk about the auto scaling groups. Uh, so, in the auto scaling group, the first kind of the policy we are going to see is the dynamic scaling policies. Uh, so, we have three kinds. Uh, we have the target tracking scaling, and this is by far the most simple and easy to set up because all you have to say is to take a metric, for example, uh, the average ASG auto scaling group CPU and give it to give it a target for example you wanted to say it uh, I stay around uh, at 40 percent across your ASG uh, well in that case in case the CPU is too high then the ASG will add instances and in case the CPU is too low then the ASG will terminate instances for you so if you wanted to go back in complexity and add more complexity uh, so you can set up a CloudWatch alarm and uh, for example that CloudWatch alarm could say hey if it's uh, triggered because the CPU is more than 70% then add uh, two units okay and this is what's called the step scaling and if your CloudWatch alarm for example is triggered because the CPU is less than 30% then remove your units uh, so this is again a step scaling so it's a bit more involved because you need to set up these rules yourself so it gives you control as uh, well into how the auto scaling group is scaling and then finally you have uh, scheduled actions for example you know that uh, something is going to happen in advance for example you know that on friday at 5 pm uh, you are going to have a, a big increase in uses because uh, I don't know uh, you are running a promotion every Friday at 5 p.m. and so therefore uh, uh, therefore maybe you want to know that by in advance you should increase the minimum capacity to 10 instances to sustain the load so on the opposite side uh, you have predictive scaling so and this is to continuously forecast load and then you are going to schedule a scaling ahead so AWS will analyze, AWS will analyze your historical load and then generate a forecast based on your load and then set up automatically scaling actions in advance to predict the right amount of instances you need to sustain that load. So it's going to be a good, especially if you look like, if you have like a patterns in your load from week to week or from day to day. So it's going to be good for such a things. Now, uh, some of the good metrics to scale on ASG is uh, CPU utilization, uh, we have request count per target, we have average network in or out. So, uh, so to ensure that the number of requests per EC2 instance is stable and they are not overloaded in terms of network request per ports. And uh, so this is how it goes. For example, you say, hey, I want three requests per target maximum. Okay. So that means that uh, if you are not able to see that is also one is to instance or nothing more um, hidden from my view. So I want three requests per target maximum. Okay. So that means that ASG will try to ASG will try to make sure auto scaling will try to make sure that any point of time each each instance is replying to three requests. Now in real life, obviously, this is more something like thousand request uh, unit sets average in and out. So for example, if you are if your application takes a lot of network in or out, for example, if you upload or download videos files through your EC2 instances, then you know that your EC2 instance has a limit in terms of how much network it can allow in. Therefore, you would use this kind of metric to scale in and out. And you have any custom metric. And then you uh, have any custom metric that you post using CloudWatch and uh, use these metrics to a scale on. Okay. Uh, uh, some other things, uh, some other things uh, that you are good to know uh, for your ASG. Uh, well, you have some spot fleet support. That means that you can mix a spot on and on demand instances in your auto scaling group. You have lifecycle hooks, uh, which allows you to perform actions before an instance in service or before it is terminated. Uh, for example, if you want to do cleanup of your instance or log extraction or special health checks, 
before an, an, an instance in service, uh, uh, an instance in, is in service. Uh, so, and finally, if you want to avoid an AMI, you have uh, two ways of doing it first. Uh, first, obviously, you must update the underlying launch, launch templates or launch configuration of your SG, but then you have two ways of doing it. So either you go ahead and you terminate EC2 instances manually and confirmation can help to automate that rolling upgrade or you would use something called EC2 instance refresh for auto scaling. So which will terminate EC2 instances for you uh, for you. and what happens that when you terminate instances in an auto scaling group ASG, the new ones come up and uh, they will have the new AMI by default because uh, well, uh, your ASG is configured to use the new launch templates or the launch configuration. Launch configuration. So uh, talking about this feature, instance refresh, uh, let's have a look. Uh, so the goal is to recreate all instances from the latest launch templates in your ASG. And uh, so that's our feature. Uh, so if you have an ASG, for example, like that has a couple or many EC2 instances uh, using the old launch templates, then we are going to upload our new launch templates with an updated AMI, for example, in our ASG. And then we'll use the API start instance ref, instance refresh. We are going to specify a minimum healthy percentage of instances so that not all instances are destroyed at once. So for example, we can say, hey, I want 60% of my instances to be healthy at any point of time. And then the ASG natively is going to terminate an instance and then create a new one using the new launch templates and so on until all your instances have been upgraded to the new launch templates we can also specify a warm up time here a warm up time which is how long until the instances are ready to use to go and iterate over terminating the old instances now uh, let us uh, talk about uh, the processes that are within your auto scaling group the first one i am here the first one is a launch process, okay, which will add EC2 instances to the group, increasing the capacity. Uh, the terminate process that removes an EC2 instance from the group, therefore decreasing its capacity. And the health check, the process uh, that uh, checks the health of your instances, uh, replace unhealthy. So that is the health check, which is a process that will terminate unhealthy instances and would recreate them. AZ uh, availability zone rebalance, which is a uh, AZ rebalance, which is a process that looks at your auto scaling group and making sure that there is an equal or balanced number of each two instances across all your availability zones. Uh, uh, alarm notification, which is a process that will accept notification uh, for CloudWatch from CloudWatch in terms of scaling. Scheduled actions. Uh, uh, scheduled actions that you create for your scaling um, then you have to add a load balancer which is a process that will add instances from the auto scaling group to your desired load balancer so or the target group of the load balancer and then there is the instance reference that we just saw earlier in the earlier slide which is a process and that is a process that performs an instance refresh in the auto scaling group by terminating, terminating all the instances and recreating new one Okay, and the cool thing about the ASG auto scaling group is that all these processes can be suspended. All these processes can be suspended. So if you want, if you don't want, for example, to replace the unhealthy in instances because you want to troubleshoot them for a bit, and then you can suspend the replaced unhealthy process and debug while you find an instance to be healthy, unhealthy. Okay, our uh, next. 
for health checks uh, that is extremely important so your ASG autoscaling group depends on the health checks to function correctly and uh, you have different health checks available the first one is the EC2 status checks uh, health check and uh, we have seen this from before and the second one if you have an elastic load balancer in front of your auto scaling group and it's an elastic load balancer health check and it's uh, HTTP based uh, HTTP protocol based uh, the idea is that if your instance is deemed unhealthy because uh, it has a bad EC2 status check or has a bad ELB health check then your auto scaling group will launch a new instance after terminating the unhealthy one uh, so the idea is that if you have a bad health check then the ASG will go crazy and start terminating all your instances so you need to make sure that the health check is going to you going to you be simple and they will check the correct thing which is the thing of the instance so uh, let's make an example here uh, so a good health check is when an auto scaling group for example checks a route on your EC2 instance called a slash health server and the server that says yes I am alive I am functioning correctly, correctly. Uh, this is good this is a good health check a bad health check is where an auto scaling group will check a route that does something quite heavy for example if you check the slash number of customers route on your EC2 instances and our EC2 instance has to do a database call to count all the number of customers wait for the database to respond to us and then get the answer to the auto scaling group so in case the database fails or in case something takes too long then the auto scaling group will think that your EC2 instance is unhealthy and will terminate it so making sure you have the right health check is extremely important uh, in your solution architecture so okay so uh, that is uh, if you were not able to see this one I would just here and the RDSDB instance is just below it so you should see in the slide it's been been hidden from my view okay so that's it for this small reminders on the auto scaling group uh, in the next lecture we will see how we can proper, properly update an auto scaling group and what are the different solution architecture around it so see you in the next lecture